Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Growing in Grace. I'm Joel Brzezinski, the Breeze Man, along with Mike Kapler, the Cap. And uh, Cap was just shaking his collar there. Uh, I, could, <laughs> I didn't know if you could pick that up or not. Get some of the but, uh, fleas I'm out or dog. something. I'm part dog. I'm part pooch. <laughs> yes. Well, here at the Grow It and Grace podcast, you know, we've got all of our past po- uh, podcasts archived at growingingrace.org. So uh, feel free to check that out. You can search the website if uh, you have a certain topic that you want to find out if we've talked about you can hear podcasts on that so we invite you to do that and of course check us out on facebook facebook.com slash grace roots also youtube.com slash grace roots twitter at grace roots and you can find all that information at growing org too some really interesting things that we've been talking about the last few weeks i've really enjoyed this uh you know talking about how well, we're dead to sin. Our sin has been taken away. Nothing can separate us from God. We are secure. We're safe. We're whole. We've been made whole in Jesus Christ. And there's nothing that can take that away. Not even when we sin or behave badly. Not that we want to, but that can't even separate us from God. But life in Christ is is so much more than just not sin. (laughs) Life in Christ is so much more than just not having to do with sin. Life in Christ is about the Holy Spirit in us. It's about life that we've freely been given, and we're going to spend some time talking about some of that this week. Well, yeah, let's let's do this, because uh, uh, Joel, I'm trying to figure out where to start with this. (laughs) It's tough. Okay, what you just said. Let Let me go from there. You know, the the Jews under the law, they were stuck in a sin consciousness because there was always constantly a reminder of sin, those uh, those repeated sacrifices and all of that. And they they knew they weren't able to keep the law. They pursued it, but it wasn't by faith. But they thought that if they could just try to keep it good enough, it would bring righteousness and life to them. Yet the Apostle Paul, as we said a couple of weeks ago, told the Galatians that if a law could have given life, I mean, even if there was just one law out of the 613 from the Old Covenant that came through Moses, if there was one that could give life, then righteousness would have been by the law. (laughs) It couldn't. It couldn't. That's why it's so futile for people to try to keep any part of the law. And as we spoke about a few weeks ago, a very important point here, and I, I, I don't want to hammer this too hard because, you know, some people don't listen to every program, so it, it helps to repeat. But in Deuteronomy and in other places, God said that this law, you will do it, but this law, you will not take anything away from it. You will not add anything to it. I remember hearing a, a minister who I like, um, but I, I remember years ago hearing him say, I mean, I like him as a person. He, he made the statement that when Jesus was giving the Sermon on the Mount, he kind of changed up the rules. Because he was Jesus, he could do that. Mm-hmm. Now, not even Jesus could do that. You can't violate the, the Word of God. You can't violate that law. And that is you can't change it. You can't add to it. You can't make it harder. You can't make it easier. You can't take away from it. You can't do it. All right. We made that point, right? Yet there are Christians today who will pick and choose what should be applied from that old law and try to make it into Christianity. And the Christian religion, unfortunately, has replaced Christ in many cases. <laughs> and that's unfortunate. You know, the, the rules and the regulations have replaced God in our lives. It's not supposed to be that way. Paul told the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, that we've become ministers of a new covenant, he told them. There was this covenant that was written on stone and with ink, the letter, he called it. And that letter killed, but the Spirit in a new covenant, the Spirit, capital S, the Spirit gives life. And see, that that's the big difference we've got going on here. So 
Listen, those of you who think that we still need an element of law in place, number one, outside of the Jewish race, you were not invited into that covenant. That covenant has been made obsolete, the Bible says. The Bible says it has come to an end. The Bible says that law was weak and useless, that we are dead to it, that we are freed from it. It says the law is not of faith, that sin increased under that law. It did not decrease. It did not improve morals. And and the strength of sin was that law. There was nothing wrong with the law itself. The law wasn't the problem. The law was holy, righteous, and good. But it was weak and useless in being able to aid any human being in reaching that place of, of perfection and right standing with God. And that's why it was given. It was given to show people, especially the nation of Israel here, it was given to show them that they could not live up to the perfect standard. So now today, you as, as a believer in Christ trying to live the Christian life, guess what? You can't do it. Instead, we rely by faith upon the one who lives in us and has given us life. Joel, hmm. join me. Yes. <laughs> well, see, all that's good. It's it's just so much in there that's truth that I think a lot of people, unfortunately, in the church won't accept, but it's all scriptural. It's all from the New Covenant epistles, from things that Paul said and the book of Hebrews, um, which may or may not have been written by Paul. But either either way, it's all in those New Testament epistles. In the church today, what Christianity is about for many people many, many people, is unfortunately, I stopped doing bad and I started doing good. It's a moral religion uh, that people have made this Christianity thing into when it was never really meant to be like that. It's not, I used to do bad and now I'm doing good or I'm doing better or I'm trying to get better. What it was was that I was once dead and now I've been made alive. That's really what this life in Christ is about. I was dead to God and now I've been made alive to him, not through my works, not through giving up the bad and and through starting to do good. Like I was talking about last week, Paul's testimony. Paul's testimony was actually that he used to do really, really good. And he had to chuck that aside. He had to give that up so that he could be found in Christ alone. And he, what he found in Christ was life, resurrection life. So the, our life is not a matter of, well, once we tried to keep the law but failed, but now in Christ we're keeping the law. No, that's not what life in Christ is about. Rather, it's we've moved into this thing called life in the Spirit. We're in the Spirit at all times. It's not like we move in and out of the Spirit or like he comes and goes. Well, when we sin, he's gone. Uh, But when we decide to do right, we'll change and we'll do what's right. Well, then the Spirit comes back. It's not like that. Under the law, like you were saying, it was the ministry of death, condemnation. It was bondage. And it was so many negative things. The law is the strength of sin. It was against us and contrary to us. Sin abounded through the law. Paul said. It brought death and a revival of sin. So if you want a revival of sin, sure, go ahead, mix uh, some laws back into your life in Christ. (laughs) But if you want life, and if you want to bear fruit unto God, you know, Paul had said that under the law, fruit was born to death, but when he died to the law, he found that fruit was born unto God. He would bear fruit to God. That's really what this life in Christ is about. So the difference here, the big difference here, is that it's not about good and evil. It's about death versus life. It's about life in the Spirit, and that is where we find true life. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's what changed. See, we have a changed heart. It's not just changed like... um transformed entirely. It's it's something brand new, created from nothing. Because why? We died with Christ and we rose with him and we're seated in heavenly places in Christ. I know that's a bit of a mystery for some people, but it's true. And so we now, as believers in Christ, we have become, we've been gifted with the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And it isn't just a matter of God seeing you as righteous. Oh, yeah, I know know he sees me as righteous, but I'm really just still a dirty, rotten sinner. No, you really are righteous. And so some people might think, well, we need these laws to guide us, to keep us in line, to give us boundaries and so forth. That's just not in the Bible. 
<laughs> not in the proper context of the covenants, it's not. And so you've, you've been a little bit led astray with some of that. And the good news might be missing out of the message because you are now empowered by grace and the Spirit of God with a new heart, a new heart that is picked up on all of the great attributes that God has now placed within us. You know, so some people might say, well, you know, I don't know, I might go out and, you know, do a lot of the wrong stuff with all this freedom in my grasp. And you know, some people will ask, well, are you saying we can go out and do whatever we want? Well, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, with a new heart, as a new creation in Christ Jesus, what if God changes? I like how Andrew Farley says that. What if God changes what you want? Mm. You know, I mean, I don't think most Christians really want to go out and sin. Now, some people might think, oh, I want to go out and have a good time and I won't have to worry about it because I'm under grace. It's true you're under grace. And, and for those who fall into condemnation, that just should never happen under the new covenant. Because here's the thing. You can reduce your sin count, good, healthy advice, right? But you've never really stopped sinning. Every thought that might not be quite right or some of the words that come out of your mouth, some of the actions that take place from time to time, even stuff you might not think that much about, it would fall short by God's perfect standard. You know, you're never going to be to that place of performing perfectly. And without that, as long as you're living under a system of law, without that perfection, then you're always going to be falling short, always going to be wallowing around in, in guilt and condemnation. It isn't meant to be that way. We now live under grace, and I, I had to pull this up real quick, Galatians chapter 2. Paul said this, he said, and he, of course this is for you too, I have been crucified with Christ. I died with him. It is no longer I who live, but he lives in me. Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith, not by the law, not by works. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me, gave himself for me, and I do not set aside that grace of God. For if righteousness comes through any law, righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly or in vain. So, Joel, you got time to say something? Well, just, yeah, real quickly as we uh, wrap up here, getting back really quickly to Paul's testimony, he had done good in his own mind. He had followed the law blamelessly, and he had to count that as done. But when he did, when he found the grace of God, he didn't think to himself, well, now I can just go live licentiously. No, but he said what he found out, as we go further into Paul's testimony, he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than the other apostles. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So w when we're talking about all this grace stuff and life in the spirit and not being under the law, we're not in any measure promoting sinful lifestyles or licentiousness. We're talking about abundant life. We're talking about empowerment to be all that God has made us to be. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.